everybody. It's Tuesday night and I'm Jessica Heilman. And I'm Jeff Heilman. Good evening. And welcome to another video blog from Wholehearted Ministries. I just wanted to say that this has been an awesome week and we've had some really great responses from last week's Hearing from God Part 1. And there was just so much to cover that we didn't get to cover in the first 10 minutes that I thought we should do a Part 2. And we actually got a really great testimony out of San Antonio from a girlfriend of mine who watched the video. And um, she became a friend from the ministry. We didn't know each other, have never actually met in person. We've been chatting over the last few months, and um, she's been getting really good. We've really been talking a lot about God and the way that he works. And she had an opportunity this last week to hear from God on um, going into work on a really busy day and running into a fellow that worked on the equipment in the restaurant that she works at and she actually he she's been trying to get into bartending because mm -hmm. there's more um, more an opportunity for making more money in bartending and, and she's been trying to for years and there's this new place that had just opened up right by her house and she's been trying for I think over a year to get it and she ran into him, and he was cleaning, he was working on the machines, and he said to her, I actually got it on chat right here, we were chatting, and if you want to go on the website, you can uh, read the chat that we had, and uh, that'll be up on the front page. She said, she said to him, he said to her, don't you do bartending over at this other place? And she's like, no, I've been trying for a year to get in, and I can't get in, and he's just like, <gasps> That and he gave her the owner's name and the bar name at the exact hotel that she's been wanting to apply at. Um, he says that they're in desperate need of help, and even if you don't have the experience, to just be straightforward with them. So she's going to be able to use him as a reference. And this all happened because she was just, you know, people would say, Oh, you were just at the right place at the right time. But what they don't know is that she's been praying for favor. She's, she, I asked her, I said, What did you do different? Had you relaxed more? Were you praying? Were you in the Word that day? Did anything lead up to this moment, like more having more God time? Mm -hmm. And um, she said, no, she wasn't in the Word. She Not that day. I had just watched your video on hearing from God and listened and remembered really to what you had to say the last time we chatted. And I prayed. I've been praying something works out in my favor for quite some time. I said, I'm so glad you were able to let God lead you into a blessing, and that's totally how it works. And she said, you know, as soon as that happened yesterday, I asked myself right then and there in the midst of managers yelling to run food and plates dropping and guests eating, so this must be what it's like to have a prayer answered and God lead you into the right direction. And then I realized he can use anyone he wants to get his point to you. Convenience? I think not. Amen, Tamara. That's so awesome. So what, what, like, what we've been teaching, what we've been talking about as far as hearing from God is concerned, if you take away what you want and go in and you ask him and you have a conversation, say, just, God, I just need help. <laughs> help. Show me. Show me what to do. Show me where to go. I'll, I'll, I'm ready to surrender to what you would have for my life. And the, my goals are no longer my goals. They're your goals, whatever they are for me. And then if you can just listen and tune everything out and listen to where God leads you and you go and you do what where he leads you to do then opportunities like this happen all the time we're we're always hearing stories and we're, we're personally running into situations to where we'll hear a word to go help somebody or to go somewhere and and both parties just get blessed and I believe that that's how the body of Christ works what do you what do you think dear well there have been a couple of times I, I think uh, boy the last I think four jobs that, that I've had over the last five years. Each of them came through uh, a time of frustration, I think, on my part with the previous job or the job that I was in because I'd mastered it. I'd gotten to the point where uh, there wasn't much to learn and, and the income had peaked out or, or had started to go down. And uh, so it came from a, a period of frustration and then a pressing into the Word and really getting that Word first place in my life and um, being able to see things through a word filter. Um, and then out of the blue, somebody would call and yeah. say, Jeff, we need you to come and do this job. Or, oh, I'm so glad that you told me you were looking for something different because right. uh, so-and-so, I know for a fact that they're looking for someone in this position. And um, 
So I, I don't think that looking for a job is a, is a bad thing to do, and I certainly have done that and spent my time and effort doing that, but it's almost never um, because of that. It, it's usually some, <laughs> some movement that wasn't expected or planned I've, for. I've seen you spend days making phone calls yeah. and, then, and then have run into somebody at the grocery store. It's like, why yeah. does that, you know, that's really where we want to be yeah. is, is we don't want to, it's like, it's not that we don't want to work. But we want to be efficient and on purpose for God. And yeah, I, I just, believe that God doesn't waste any time. I just don't want to waste time working. Yeah. I'd he, rather spend like, the time in the Word and then absolutely. ask God the one phone call I need to make to go get that new job or to get that sale of a property or to get that business going or to get that partner right. or that, that capital that we need to get started. Um, I'd rather make one phone call and have it be on purpose and have it be exactly what God has in store for us well, than making just, hundreds of phone uh, calls and not producing harvest for example look at the look at the israelites i mean they wandered for four it says that they were wandering for 40 years out in the desert it was 40 years out in the desert and then jesus comes and he gets everything done in what a matter of three years right he's totally right. totally he, he wasn't wandering i mean you could read the word and you can he say he went purpose. from this town to this town yeah. to this town to this town and if there was ever any um any challenge it was like there was a storm, so what? I'm going from here to here, and I'm on point, and I'm purpose, and I've got a plan, and I've got a direction. Right. So when God is with you, <laughs> He knows exactly what ordered steps that we need to go. And we've heard, we've heard testimonies after testimonies of people who, for instance, in the September 11th tragedy, how they um, would feel impressed upon them not to go to work that day and they didn't go to work that day like yeah. they were impressed to take their kid to kindergarten for the first day i know i heard read one testimony on ken That's copeland right. ministries that that he didn't go to work that day because he, he felt impressed that he was supposed to stay, stay home and take his kid to his first day of kindergarten and then look how he was his life was spared because he didn't end up going so my real purpose in helping people to understand and hearing from god is that there is real there are real problems and there are real answers that we can find in the Word. And if we can get on point with God so that we can hear from Him, we will avo we will not only be blessed, but we will avoid problems and setbacks and even personal tragedies in our lives that will keep us from walking into the wrong place at the wrong time, but continuously stepping our steps in the right place at the right time. That's right. And so um, what I was... What I was mentioning earlier was that um, when you put that word first place in your life and, and when you read it in a version that maybe you can understand, I know the King James Version is sometimes a little bit too too um, raw or too meaty for people to read for the first time. So I, you read, I use King James and it works. It works wonders. It works wonders life. for you. You were you're, you but, started uh, with the King James. You, you understood Bible, it right away. The King James Bible, both, That's right. both of which are... Um, based on King James. If you, I mean, we had a chance through our Bible College uh, courses to go and look at the history of the King James Bible and, yeah. and, how, um, and how, it w at how it came together. Um, and, and anybody who's, who's curious about translations, I really encourage you to go in and do the research, do the research for yourself to okay. see how the King James Bible came to be uh, because all modern day translations and that, and that in it's not are meant to be you know I would encourage anybody who needs to read the word and the reason why I keep bringing it back to the word to the word to the word is when you know that word even if it's just a scripture at a time like I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me Philippians 4:13 4, 4, yeah. <laughs> when you have that even just one scripture like that that can change your life that can change that can that seed of I can do all things that through Christ who strengthens yeah. me if you believe in Christ you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you you can take on that assignment you can start that business you can take those you can take that photography to the next level you can do whatever it is that you feel God is leading you to do because of that one very scripture. And if you put that scripture in front of your face, anytime that there's a problem or a situation that you come against, this is what you hear, this is what you see, is I can do things. This is the filter. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Yeah. When and adversity comes on, exit. Yeah. someone or the, uh, the sense of fear or trepidation is right. present, you can speak to it. Yeah. and say, that doesn't line up. That's it's right. not what the Word says. It's not who I'm supposed to be. That's right. It's not how I'm supposed to feel. And praise God. I, I, remember, I remember in 2002, my friend John Asher out in uh, South Carolina said, I'm not moved by what I see, and I'm not moved by what I feel. I'm moved by the Word of God. That's right. And, uh, and to be able to have that kind of conviction, and it comes from staying and meditating and steeping yourself in the Word. That's right. When you have that Word-focused mindset... Mm -hmm. 
your mindset will actually change circumstances That's instead right. of your mind being changed by what you see. Bye.